Anyone that knows me well knows that I love technology. I love anything that can help to get a job done faster or anything that can add a bit of interest to a process in my production tasks. So when I see an iPad app that can move production entirely from my computer to my iPad, I'm sold. Now, to be honest, I have seen this app before, but it's been recently updated, so I thought it may be interesting to check it out again. Cubasis is an iPad app that's essentially the tablet version of Steinberg's Cubase DAW. Available on iOS, Android and Chrome OS, it's an easy way to get producing on the move if you don't want to carry something as chunky as a laptop around. For those of you who somehow managed to carry an audio interface to your nearest Costa Coffee, just like Matt from our Discord group, Cubasis supports up to 24 inputs and outputs, so you can take your entire hardware rack for a day out on the town. If you haven't already tried Cubasis, it's created Creativity is quite something for a tablet device app. It does cost 50 quid, but with that, you can take advantage of an unlimited number of audio tracks, meaning you can work on as big a project as your device's hardware can handle, 32-bit floating point audio processing, built-in analog synthesizers with 126 Rediscope presets, 120 virtual instruments, sampling, audio loops, MIDI, Mackie Huey control surface compatibility, and more. It's a seriously cool app for use when creativity strikes whilst you're away from the studio, with way too many features to list here, so I highly recommend checking it out if you need that portability in your life. If you need an interface to go with your Cubasis setup, maybe the new PreSonus AudioBox Go audio interface will be the one. It's powered by USB-C, so it's perfect for connecting to an iPad Pro, as well as your desktop computer for use in a regular studio setting. The AudioBox Go is class compliant and doesn't require any drivers, so it's as easy as plug and play, perfect for technophobes like Mark. It's a two-in, two-out interface with XMAX L preamps, very similar to those found on the PreSonus Studio Live desks, and also features an instrument input as part of that setup. Of course, the audio box has 48 volt phantom power, so you can use practically any microphone you see fit, and actually comes with a free license for Studio One Prime to get you started with a door if you don't already have one. Wait. Incoming, incoming news from uh, PreSonus. They've actually released another three interfaces. <coughs> There's uh, one for agrophobics called the Studio Box Don't Go, uh, one for constipated people called the Studio Box Try Very Hard To Go, and there's one for people with anger management issues called the Studio Box F*** OFF! Moving on, and French speaker manufacturer Focal, Focal has announced three new products. The Alpha 80 Evo, Alpha Twin Evo, and Sub 1. Those of our audience who are members of our Discord server will know that the Alpha 65 Evo gets mentioned on a nearly daily basis by our number one hype man, Merck, and we've been dying to get our hands on a pair of Alpha Evos to hear how they sound after hearing so many positive things being said about them across the internet. As a quick overview, the Alpha 80 Evo is a two-way near-field monitor featuring an 8-inch bass driver and a 1-inch tweeter, and the new monitor line is also Dolby Atmos ready. The cabinets feature inserts for wall and ceiling mounting, meaning they can be set up as an Atmos array without any further modifications to the cabinet. Whether they're the best choice for Atmos at that price point remains to be seen. Until we've heard a pair, we can't really comment, but for budget end studios, these could be a great solution. The Alpha Evo 80 boasts a frequency response of 38Hz to 22kHz, so it looks to be able to cover all aspects of the mix, especially when paired with the Sub 1, which I'll come to in a moment. As I mentioned earlier, Focal, Focal! Are, are also releasing the Alpha Twin Evo, a mid-tweeter mid-arrangement of drivers in a landscape orientation featuring dual 6.5-inch woofers and the same 1-inch tweeter found on the 80 Evo, and can cover the 38Hz from 22kHz spectrum identical to the Alpha 80 series. Interestingly, you can also place the Twin Evos in portrait orientation. Depending on the characteristics of your room, you can rotate the speakers to choose whether to benefit from bigger horizontal or vertical dispersion from your monitoring, allowing you to negate reflections from walls or ceilings as appropriate. Thanks to the dual bass drivers, the speakers also benefit from a lower risk of thermal limiting. The amount of energy needed to produce a certain level of SPL is lower per bass driver as the workload is split. 
Finally, the Sub 1 is a twin 8 inch subwoofer system. Just like the two Alpha speaker models, the Sub 1 is also powered by active amplification, providing 200 watts RMS of power and features a frequency response of 32 hertz up to 120 hertz, perfect for working alongside the Alpha Evo and Alpha twin monitors. The entire Alpha and Sub series can be configured to work well with Dolby Atmos as mentioned earlier, with the Sub 1 being configurable to work as LFE or Low Frequency Effects speaker. In terms of pricing, the AT Evo costs $549 per speaker, $659 for the Twin Evo and $999 for the Sub 1. They're all due to go on sale in February and I've asked Focal if they'll loan us a pair for the review, so make sure you've subscribed to be the first to see when we review them. Thanks for watching, you'll see us in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and ding the ding dong.